Hey, Ron Sullivan, your online hit consultant. I wanted to talk today about the 50% rule. I look this um, is something I came up with recently, and one of the things that I love to do is find out when players are struggling, if they're having a timing problem, right? If they're not following this basic rule, right? Typically, um, when this is out or the timing of this is off, then the player is struggling. Right, so um, basically all I've done here is I've counted the frames out of the pitcher's hand all the way to contact, right? And what the pros show us is, is almost eerie as far as the consistency in this regard of making sure that their front foot is getting down at a certain point. This doesn't matter if you're a big leg kick hitter, uh, if you're an open to close stance. Typically you're going to see this same type of sequence where at the 50% mark, is when you'll start seeing players at least get their toe to start touching, particularly with striders, right? This is this is the pattern that you see, right? And then when you get to the tenth or when you get to the sixty percent mark, typically you're starting to see a player will get their heel in the ground, right? And so why is this important? Well, you know this is basically this is kind of science, right? You can do this same uh, scientific approach with your own players. Right, and that what you can do is video the pitcher throwing the ball and your player at the plate. Find out where, um, and look, the frame rate's going to change, right? You're not going to have the same frames in your kid's game that you're going to see here, right? You're using an iPhone or what have you. You're going to have a certain amount of frames, though. So let's say you have 20 frames uh, to the front of the plate, right? And all you have to do is figure out, well, where's that 10th frame at? Right, and if their if their toe is beginning to touch at that point, you're probably in good company or you're in good timing. All right, and then when their heel plants, that should be around the 60% mark or somewhere close to it. Now I say all that and going, well, that, that sounds very vague. There's not a whole lot of science in that. Well, kids, you know, kids will typically get their foot down when the ball is right in front of the plate. Right, so they have wacky timing. Right, and then we usually will consider those mechanical problems. When really it's just a timing problem where the kid doesn't give himself enough time to really uh, unload the swing. The ball's already on them and then you see these really wacky approaches at the plate. Right? So, um, you know, another great thing about this is, you know, this really gets players' attention. We always talk to players about loading up earlier or starting earlier and stuff like that. You know, in practice, this is a great way, or in the cage, if you've got, if you can show them the real pitching distance or from the front of the plate to wherever the pitcher's release point is, right? Not to the mound, but where the release point is, right? And then walk them to the 50% mark of where that is and say, hey, this is where you should be starting to get your front foot down. Um, when you see that in person, right, when you're kind of looking at it, uh, it does get your attention where you start going, whoa, that, that seems way out there, right, particularly to kids, um, but it's inevitable. It's universal from, from big league to little league. If you hit the ball hard consistently, you're going to see that these players that do that, they normally are starting to get their front foot down at this 50 to 60 percent mark. Okay, 50 for, for sure with the front toe touch and then a little bit, uh, maybe one more, one more frame or 60% with the heel plant, right? And so you can, it's a great visual aid where you can really, I think, get through to players. If they're thinking about loading up earlier, that's a good thing. But that doesn't necessarily say anything about the front foot, you know? They just think they're getting an earlier start. Well, give them a visual aid here where they go, oh, okay, this is why he wants me to load up earlier. I've got to have my front starting to touch at this point. Okay, I kind of see that a little different now. I think it's a great way to demonstrate that. But to further point out how consistent this approach is, right, here's uh, Sanchez, right? Now this is going to be a difference in frame rate because it's a fastball. Lindor was hitting a changeup over on the left, and so you had 17 frames. This fastball is one, two, three, four, five, six, and almost inevitable. At the seventh frame, big leaguers have their toe touching the ground, right? Now, honestly, you're going to see some variances in this, right? But usually at the seventh frame, you'll see that that toe is either really close to the ground, right? Or it will be in the ground. Occasionally, you'll see a player at heel plant at this point, right? But the next frame is for heel plant usually, the eighth frame, right? Whereas, in, and then the total amount of frames typically for big leaguers is 13 frames to contact, 
right, when they're typically contact is just out in front of the plate, right, and so um, you'll see that from the eighth frame, they've only got five frames to get it done, right, so you better be good, <laughs> right? So, um, uh, again, this is consistent. Seventh frame, toe touch, <coughs> excuse me, eighth frame, heel plant, right? It's a good rule of thumb to start working on that. And, um, again, the frame rate is going to be different for your players, okay? So, you know, don't go in expecting 13 frames to, to the pitcher's mound in a 10-U in game, right? But you can still do the averaging easy, just counting frames and finding your average. Now, this has, a, for you coaches, this has changed the way I do my front toss to my young players, particularly uh, my young players that are struggling with timing, right? So if you typically set up, uh, let's see, in this area, I don't know, 13, uh, I mean, I'm usually about anywhere from 15 to 18 feet out front when I'm doing my front toss from out front, right? So front toss is typically I'm sitting on a bucket, throwing underhand. People do this a little bit different, right? Um, but nonetheless, um, from that distance, what I learned was is that if you're, if you're tossing from that distance and players are striding, then perhaps some players are building in the habit, right, of wanting to feel their body moving when the ball is in space at that moment, right? And typically, right, what we're seeing here, as far as this universal rule, as it would seem, is that players need to be settling in at that point. So I want them to start, when they're seeing the ball at that distance, already having their foot in the ground. So this isn't an anti-stride campaign, right? I have no striders, I have big leg kickers, I have all kinds of different pre-swing movements. But this is typically for players that are struggling with being late, you know, it's something that kind of further pounds home the idea of, okay, I want to start getting used to seeing the ball in space at that point and having my foot already in the ground, right? It's so, it, look, my older players, my high school players, I, I, you know, they know the difference between a pitched ball and the, the flips from out front, right? And so if they're wanting to move a little bit, they're typically going to get their front foot down earlier anyways when you're doing flips, the good ones anyways, so I, I don't worry about that so much with them. But if you have a player that's struggling with timing, you might consider uh, getting their front foot in the ground, right, when you're doing flips. And then, you know, letting them know, look, it's okay to stride, um, but we want to, you know, from this distance, we want to learn to keep our, have our foot already in the ground, so forth. This may help you with players that are consistently late. Um, but, hey, look at the 50% rule right? Start talking to your players about that. And I assure you, you're going to start seeing that players are going to start giving themselves a chance to hit, create hard contact out front. That's where the hard contact lives, right? So if you have players that are rolling over balls, hitting ground balls, typically these players are late. You know, it could be a mechanical problem, obviously, with youth players. But nonetheless, um, they're not giving themselves a chance to have a balanced approach where they're going to stay back and hit a ball hard out front because they're not getting their front foot down early enough. All right. Hey, this is Ron Sullivan, your online hitting consultant. Thanks, guys.